whether it's a magnum opus contest model or simply a display piece. The fit and finish of an aircraft model's canopy or windows can be a make or break feature. One of the fastest and simplest ways to mask a stock canopy is with adhesive foil. You can make your own by spraying low tack adhesive onto common household foil or you can use an adhesive foil like bare metal foil. The process begins by covering the canopy with adhesive foil. Any wrinkles can be burnished flat and won't affect the final result. The framework of the stock canopy is clearly visible through the foil. Using a nice sharp blade, follow the outline of the raised detail. Note the direction the blade is moving. Using a blade with a shallow curve, such as this number 23 blade, allows the blade to cut just behind the tip. As the blade is advanced forward, it's very easy to sight down the blade. The blade can be rocked forward to precisely stop the cut at a specific junction. Obviously, using a straight edge blade like this will be impossible on any flat surface. Scalpel blades like this are hard to handle because if you want to use the tip, the handle will have to be raised to such an angle as to make it difficult to control. Likewise, if the handle is held at a comfortable angle, the portion of the blade that cuts is so far away from the tip, it's difficult to see. Once the cuts around the panels have been done, then the foil that covers the canopy frame can be removed. A toothpick or a sharpened stick is very handy for this task. Any residual adhesive can be removed with a Q-tip moistened with common paint thinner. This method is simple and quick, but it has some problems. This cross-section shows a canopy that has a raised frame, but some of the same issues affect a canopy with only raised lines. Although exaggerated in this drawing, all molded raised detail has a taper, and likewise the angle where the raised detail meets the flat portion usually has a minute radius. It becomes very difficult to exactly follow the inside angle, possibly resulting in an inconsistent mask. In addition, if the framework is raised, as in the example shown, what is the exact scale width of the frame? Is it at the base or the top of the raised detail? Because of these issues, the only time I use this method is when a model is displayed in this fashion. If the model is to be viewed close up, and I'm using the stock canopy, I prefer to remove the raised detail and allow the thickness of the paint to represent any difference in detail height. This also allows me maximum control over the layout. As an example, one quarter of an inch in 48th scale is only five thousandths of an inch, so it doesn't take much paint to give a scale impression of a raised framework. The raised detail can be removed by sanding with your favorite abrasive methods. I like to use sandpaper on a wood block against any panels that I want to keep flat. Final polishing is done with a rag wheel and white diamond polishing compound. I much prefer the look of a polished acrylic canopy over a canopy coated with Future Floor Wax. Fortunately, my bottle of Future won't go to waste because I've found a novel way to use it. Next step is to lay out the framework with tape. I prefer 3M Fine Line Tape, but other tapes that give a solid, smooth edge will work as well. 
Most of the time I use this method for cutting tape strips. The strips are then applied to the canopy. In this example, I've left the canopy unpolished for demonstration purposes. Once the strips are correctly positioned, the canopy is covered with adhesive foil. Cut along the strips and remove the tape. The tape strips can also be cut using a strip cutter. The commercial strip cutters that I've seen don't offer the precision that I find necessary for model construction, so I fabricated my own from a piece of brass rod and a couple of modified blades. This homemade cutter features blades that are only beveled on the outside and are short in length, so that the width of the spacer is accurately translated to the tip. Just like a well-done undercarriage and set of wheels can go a long way to lending reality to a model, hiding the joint between the clear and solid plastic pieces can also work wonders to an overall realistic look. So you always plan construction so that the paint is carried over the joint. The nose of this 148 scale B17 brings together a number of techniques. All the windscreen panels have been replaced with acrylic that I milled to a thin cross section and then cut to maximum size. All the other windows were replaced with oversized acrylic to hide the joint. An acrylic plug is used to keep dust out of the interior. A combination of fine line and masking tape is used on the nose cone. Fine line tape and liquid mask is used on the astrodome. All the other panels are masked with scotch tape so I could better visualize the borders of the windows. The result is very optically convincing. Decal can also be used effectively to simulate framing, especially when the framing is very narrow. The decal can be cut in strips the same way as the masking tape. Solid aluminum decal was used on this 148 scale B24 and this 72nd Boeing 314. Finally, the masking and detail of the rear glazing on this 32nd P51B is a result of several steps. A stencil was cut for the mask of the oversized acrylic panel and then another stencil was cut for the panel outline that was scribed into the paint. There wasn't a lot of room for error because of the narrow width of the frame. There are many ways to handle clear portions of aircraft models. Hopefully these methods will add to your bag of tricks and spark your creativity.